Shrouded in the mists of southeast Turkey lies yet another vicious Middle Eastern war. This could be Iraq or Syria. Instead, it's a NATO ally. Now fighting the PKK and in danger of tearing itself apart. This is the small Kurdish town of Silvan. When I first reported from here over 20 years ago, the PKK war was at its terrible worst. Now it's beginning to look that way again. The battle for Silvan has been raging on and off since August. This is state news agency footage. Independent reporting risks arrest or jail. We managed to reach the rebels only after armed police had withdrawn and the latest of five government curfews had ended. Now, just a hundred meters up the hill from this statue of Ataturk, the founder of modern Turkey, I find that they are manning the barricades again. They're not just building ramparts, but digging trenches in case of attack. The PKK's youth militia, inspired by Kurdish fighters across the Syrian border, to dream of Kurdistan here as well. The white sheet behind me here is meant to defend the people protecting this place from government snipers who've been positioned on the surrounding rooftops. And if you look up here, you can see there's been quite a battle for this place, that building covered in bullet holes. And this place has declared independence from the rest of Turkey. That's what people here are saying in an extraordinarily brazen act of defiance. And it's very hard to see how an election can take place here on November the 1st. The Kurdish commander here calls herself a son of the PKK, though she's a woman in her early 20s. The Turkish army and the Turkish police, they won't allow you to carry on like this forever. What are you going to do? We will defend ourselves, whatever the cost, no matter what. Even if Kurdish MPs win seats in parliament, the Turkish state will fight us anyway. So we have to fight as well. From this amateur footage, these plainclothes Turkish police look similar to those they call terrorists. Civilians inside one of three rebel neighborhoods told us they had been trapped by tank fire. The official death toll in Silvan, two soldiers and 17 PKK. Yet Medani Akjanin told me his 16-year-old son, Vedat, was no PKK fighter when he was killed by gunfire from up there on October the 2nd. I don't know if it was police or soldiers, he said. There was a curfew and he went out. I don't know why, but he wasn't armed, not at all. Election week in Silvan is not what you'd call festive. The local Kurdish MP happily poses for photographs, but she's cancelled all rallies because it simply isn't safe. She's not promising them independence, but Kurdish education and freedom to speak their language without being arrested. And many of them speak no Turkish at all. Is it a vote for staying inside Turkey? difficult. Uh, we, are, we are a part of Turkey, but we are as Kurds. We are with well, the same uh, rights as the Turk. But the government says it has to fight the PKK. That's what the government says. It has to fight terrorism. That's what it says. Uh, they say it, uh, every time we are fighting against terrorism, but they're fighting against the Kurdish populations in the streets. They're killing uh, young children, uh, four, five, six years old children. They are terrorists. And the hatred here for Turkey's president is intense. He's trying to uproot us and to kill us, this woman says. And watching her, it feels as if Turkey's Kurds have found their voices in ways I've never heard as powerfully before. <laughs> president Erdogan was once widely credited with starting the peace process He's now accused of deliberately ending it to sweep up nationalist votes. 
and that leaves this one government MP fighting to keep his local seat. Which was the first Turkish party to recognize the democratic rights of the Kurds. It was the government which put an end to torture, to unsolved murders and bloodshed. We brought Kurdish rights out into the open. It was the same government which failed to stop an attack on this pro-Kurdish demonstration. The worst bombing in Turkish history. Over 100 killed in the capital Ankara on October the 10th. Almost certainly the work of so-called Islamic State and perhaps intended to plunge its two enemies, Turkey and the PKK, back into civil war. One man could be vital in mediating to prevent that. Selahattin Demirtas is leader of the Kurdish-based party, which back in June polled a record-breaking 13% of the vote, enough to deny the Turkish government a majority and force another election this week. Every election is important, he told me, but this one could give Demirtas the power to broker a lasting peace. Though Turkey is now so polarized that his party offices have been attacked, and he faces multiple death threats. In a country beginning to look more like Syria than it should. This is the Rustem Pasha Mosque, a 16th century jewel of Ottoman architecture, blasted by gunfire this month, and for the first time the front line of what may be a new kind of guerrilla war. Local people say that a Turkish armoured personnel carrier smashed its way through this wall in an attempt to end the siege at this mosque and that a 12 year old girl was shot dead by a Turkish sniper in the military operation which followed. What's perhaps most shocking about this incident is that it took place right in the centre of Diyarbakir, a major city. The Kurdish war used to be confined mostly to small towns and villages. Now it's come to Diyarbakir and it could spread to other cities as well. Turkey may be sinking back into its familiar Kurdish mire, only this time it could be deeper. And with the rest of the Middle East boiling over, the timing couldn't be much worse. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Southeast Turkey.